right, so I'm going to try again to do that. All right, so let's try this. So uh, you should know where we started with all this is now if you have grams, we were doing this here where we were going in on moles and we were converting from one mole to another and then we're leaving on moles. And for that, you need the balanced equation. Now we're going to start with grams. And if we use grams, or if we have to start with grams, or if we have to end with grams, that means the periodic table is going to get involved. And depending on what the problem asks, if it asks you grams, make sure you're using a periodic table. You will always use this balanced equation part. You will always have to convert from one mole to another mole. And then, depending on where you're ending, you could be done if the question just asks for moles, or if it asks for more grams, then you got to go back to the periodic table. So let's give this a whirl here. So the mole mole relationship comes from the balanced equation. Oops. Balanced equation. And excuse all that. <laughs> and then the gram to mole relationship comes from the periodic table. All right. So let's give it a whirl. So this problem doesn't want to write knee. There's a knee. Aluminum reacts with oxygen to form aluminum oxide. Aluminum reacts with oxygen to form aluminum oxide. How many moles of aluminum? So we're looking for moles of aluminum are required to react with 27 grams of oxygen. So you see this number. That's a given. That tells you that's where your given starts. It's grams and it's oxygen. So we're starting with grams and we're going to moles. So if we look at our little highway here, we're starting with grams. So we're going to have to do a periodic table thing. We're always going to need this mole to mole conversion. And then we're getting off there. We don't have to go to grams after that because we're going to moles of aluminum. So here we go. So we start here with our given. We have to cancel grams of oxygen. And we have to go to, we can't go right from grams of oxygen to moles of aluminum. That's not going to help. But we can get the moles of oxygen. And that's on the periodic table. And if you look on the periodic table, oxygen is 16. And there's two of them here. So we're talking about 32 grams in one mole. So 32 grams in one mole is that. Uh, that'll get rid of grams of oxygen. Remember, we always use one for the periodic table because the grams on the periodic table are for one mole of that substance. So now we're trying to go from moles of oxygen to something helpful. And since our answer needs to be in moles of aluminum, that's very helpful. So we'll just go to moles of aluminum. And now we're looking at this mole to mole relationship. So we need to go to the balanced equation. The coefficient associated with aluminum is four and the coefficient associated with oxygen is three. So then what you're going to do is multiply 27 times four and divide by 32 times three. So this is 27 times four divided by 32 times three. And as you can see here, moles oxygen transfer. The only thing left standing is moles aluminum. So that's why that's the units of our answer. This came from the balanced equation. And this came from the periodic table. And hopefully when you do all that, you realize that it's 1.1 with significant figures, moles of aluminum is your answer. All right, so <laughs> here we go again. So example two, how many moles? We're looking for moles of water. So needed will be moles of water. And it's form when we, here's that number. So that means we got to give it 94.2 grams of propane. Now, if you didn't know what propane was, I usually would have something that says in words, propane plus oxygen makes water and carbon dioxide. So that will tell you this is the propane. Hopefully also you remember that propane means three carbons. All right, so we're going to start with 94.2 grams of propane. And we are going to moles of water. So if we go back to our highway here, we're starting with grams. So we got to use the periodic table. We're going to have to use the balance equation for the moles to moles. But since we're stopping at moles of water, that's all we're going to do. So this is a two-step process. So we got to go from grams of C3H8 to moles of C3H8. And we're going to use the periodic table 
to do that. And when we use the periodic table, it's always one mole. And the carbon is 12. And there's three of them. And the hydrogen is one. And there's eight of them. So that's eight plus 36 for a grand total of 44. So it's 44 grams of propane in one mole. So that gets rid of the grams of propane. But now we got this mole of propane. So we got to go from moles of propane to something helpful. And as you can see here, moles of water is going to be extremely helpful because that's our answer. So going right from moles of propane to water, we're going to need for a mole to mole relationship, the balanced equation, water is a four and propane is understood to be a one. So this is 94.2 times four divided by 44 moles of water, which gives you eight point, can't read my own writing, but I think that's a five, maybe a one. Not sure what happened there. Let's say five, 8.56 moles of water. All right, so that's your answer. So this one, <laughs> oddly put in there, here's our given. We got 53.3 grams of sodium chlorate. So 53.3 grams sodium chlorate is NaClO3. That's this stuff. Uh, and we're looking for grams of sodium chloride. So that means this is going to be one of those long problems. And a long problem means we're starting at grams and we're finishing at grams. So we're going to need the periodic table twice and we're going to need the balance equation once. Starting with 53.3 grams, we got to go from grams of NaClO3 to, we can't go right to grams NaCl, so we have to stop at mole. NaClO3, because that's the best we can do with the periodic table. And the periodic table is us always one mole of this. If you add up sodium plus chlorine plus three oxygens, you get 106.5 grams. So that's sodium is 23 and chlorine is 35.5 and oxygen is, oops, is 16 times 3. Add all that up, you'll get 106.5 from the periodic table. That gets rid of the grams NaClO3. Now we need to go from moles NaClO3 to something useful. Since we want grams of NaCl, it would be useful if we can get the moles of NaCl because that's like on the way there. And we get this from a mole to mole relationship from the balanced equation. So that's going to be a two and a two. So it's two to two relationship between NaCl and NaClO3. And then we move on from moles of NaCl to uh, grams of NaCl because that's what we need. So that's again a periodic table situation. Since it's periodic table, we always put a one there. And if you add up sodium, which is 23 and 35.5 for chlorine, you get 58.5 for NaCl, that's a point. So then you multiply the tops and divide by the bottoms and you flip to the next thing and you get 29.3 grams of NaCl as the answer. All right, a couple more of these. Uh, forgive that thing. I'll try to move it without turning this off. There we go. All right, so copper reacts with nitric acid to form copper nitrate, nitri nitrogen dioxide and water. Uh, how many grams of copper? So we need grams of copper for 2.5 grams of nitrogen dioxide, 2.50 grams nitrogen dioxide. So we're going grams to grams. So again, grams to grams means we're going to need the periodic table twice and we're going to need that balanced equation once. So we're going to start with the 2.50 grams of NO2 to get out of grams. We're always going to need the periodic table. And for NO2, nitrogen is 14 and oxygen is 16 times two of them. Gives us something that is 46 grams in one mole. So that's 46 grams in one mole NO2. Now we got to get out of moles of NO2 because we got grams there. So moles of NO2 and we're trying to get to grams of copper. 
So we can't go right to grams of copper from moles of NO2, but we can get to moles of copper using the balanced equation. So copper's got a 1 in front of it, and NO2 has a 2 in front of it. So there's two of those for every one of those. That gets rid of moles NO2, and then one mole of copper. We can cancel that down here. Moles of copper. Oops. Copper, and we need grams of copper. So that should, again, once I say grams, bring to mind the periodic table. And there's one of those for every 63.5 grams of copper. So you multiply the tops, divide by the bottoms. That's a 46, I think. Yeah, that's a 46. And you get 1.72 grams of copper. All right. And then number five, the last one, and I get to be done. Here you're looking at lead nitrate. Lead 2 nitrate decomposes into lead oxide plus nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen. So lead 2 nitrate, lead 2 oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and oxygen. If you have, here's that number, 6.3 grams of nitrogen dioxide. So that's starting here. That's our given, 6.30 grams nitrogen dioxide. How much? grams of lead to nitrate. So we want grams of PbNO3. Oh, I remember this in class now. Two. <laughs> All right. It's ugly, but it's better than it's been. You should look at last year's video. Just go take a look. Trust me. You'll be happy. Er. All right. 6.30 grams of NO2 is where we're starting. And we're going grams to grams. So that's a three trip on the on the chart there and we're going to have to use because of grams the periodic table so we got grams of no2 to moles of no2 since we're from the periodic table we're going to put a one there nitrogen is 14 and oxygen is 16 times 2 which is 32 and you put it all together you get 46 grams of no2 in one mole now that gets rid of grams we need to go from moles of NO2, because that's definitely not the answer we want. And we got to get to grams of PBNO3 too. We can't get there from moles of NO2, but we can certainly get from one mole to another of PBNO3 too. That's not the ugliest I've done. So the number of the coefficient for NO2 is four. So we'll put a four there. And the coefficient for lead nitrate is two. So we can put a two there. And that gets rid of moles NO2. And now we're up to moles PBNO3. So we're almost there. We need to go from moles PBNO3 to 2 grams PBNO3 too. And I did not leave myself enough room. But if you add lead plus nitrogen times 2 plus oxygen times 6, you get 331.2 grams per one mole. So you multiply the tops, 6.3 times 1 times 2 times 331.2, and divide by the bottoms, 46 times 4. And you get 22.7 grams of PBNO3, 2. So hopefully that helped. And I'm going to stop talking.